Greetings from the book Cherith, friends. It is a beautiful day today here in Shelby, Alabama, and I just wanted to share it with you. Also, just to share with you what the Lord is doing at this amazing time. With so much is coming together, not just with the prophetic time, but just seeing what the Lord is working here on the ground. But then also, as we go forward, how the Lord shows us opportunities for how, as we go forward, what He's been working what he has in mind becomes more clearer as we go forward of the incredible harvest that he has in mind and he's been working toward that goal and as we get closer and closer us seeing more and more the bigger picture of wow lord the opportunity that you are building here the momentum you are building here for the day that is approaching that you've shown us all along you've and also working parallel a work here on the ground that dovetails with what you've been showing us up in the heavens but now as we get closer and closer to that day we realize how much you plan to use what you're working down here on the ground for a great harvest and so that is what is so exciting to me right now as it becomes more clear of wow what the lord has worked all these past few years the potential for the harvest is absolutely incredible and so that's what I want to share with you today, the heart of what the Lord has been working, but then the potential, how it's all coming together, how it's becoming so clear of how we can reach so many souls and lives for eternity just within the first few hours of the rapture. How the Lord has been working and preparing literally a rapture rapid response team. And that's what you and I are. That's what He's been showing us. That's what He's been preparing prepared us for along this journey he's given us information just for our sake so we could see the day approaching but then he's also given us print information posters booklets he's given us print information that we could rapidly share with people have available for them once the rapture happens to take advantage of how the hearts are going to be very tender at the time people are going to have very soul searching questions at that time and the lord has prepared all this and especially now, so how he's making it clear how we could rapidly disseminate that information, have so much in place ready to go to get as big of a harvest as possible at that opportune moment, which is only coming once in a life, lifespan, a generation, once in history, really. We're at a prophetic time in history that prophets have looked forward to they've talked about but we are here on the ground level right now and we have this opportunity because we see the day approaching and we see the Lord working in our own midst he's given us a incredible opportunity to reach into eternity to change the world to affect and seek our father's kingdom seek the best for it, and serve our king very brightly at this late hour and this is what i want to share with you today the heart and the vision of what the lord is showing right now how so much is coming together right now that we can be a part of and we can go forward today and and put out the nets for a great harvest that he is showing us is just in a rapidly day approaching that we see and as we see that day approaching we should be so much the more preparing for it working provoking one another unto love and unto good works why because we see that day we're preparing for that day because we want to take advantage of it for eternity for our father's glory and so it is amazing to see how he's been preparing so many mobile assets here with the clinic laundry trailer the other projects that we're going to talk about here just so much coming together let me take you inside here for a quick tour just the progress of how it's coming it is rapidly coming together and you can see making new progress getting a lot of the finishing details in place cabinets shelving just a lot of the trim work let me back up here a little bit and you can see the workspace a lot is coming together i've been able to clear out a lot of the construction stuff and still have to make another cabinet over here just to hold all the laundry material and bleach and just different things like that but we've already like here's we've got the sliding door and this this normally keeps the two areas compartmentalized keep the dirty area where everything being brought in from the patient wing it's going to be in here so you want to keep that sealed off from the clean area because you don't want any nasties going in there or making it too easy for them to get in there and there's a ventilation system that's over in that area that i have to finish up but that draws in air 
uh, from that vent up there, but then also from another vent. So the air is always being pulled away from the clean area. Just so any airborne nasties just go that way, especially from the scrub sink, everything goes that way and is ventilated outside. But then once clothes are washed, they are brought into the clean area. Made progress here on the hand wash sink. Got shelves, gonna be spreading that to the other cabinets so it's a little disorganized, but they got their hand wash station. It's all functional now, ready to go. Let me just look over here. This gives you a little bit preview. Cleared out a little spot to show you what the countertop's gonna look like, their workspace where they'll be able to fold the different linens and pillowcases and sheets and blankets and then just organize them and sort them up into the bins above. And they got little carts dedicated for the clean. There's sorting bins in the other area totally for the dirty. So it keeps everything compartmentalized. All the clean stuff is brought in here on those and then they stick it in the washers. Um, actually, they don't stick in the washers. They'll stick it in the, the, the spin dryers over there. Let me look over here. Again, a little bit more of the sundry supplies, ironing boards, coat hangers. Got more outlets installed for the irons as well, which are used for sanitizing. You use the steam to high heat sanitize them, not necessarily for wrinkles. That's, that's not important really during this scenario, but you do want to steam sanitize certain things, especially that are going to be used in the OR department. Got the maintenance room door all mechanical room all squared away at least a door on it there's a vent there still a lot of work to do in here with the wiring which we really won't get a better idea of till the generator gets here and we can talk more clearly with the electrician once he has an idea what he's going to work with and how he's going to hook that up to everything else making progress we got the vents in the wall for the dryers just need to hook them up once we finish get the wiring done for that so a lot is coming together Oops. oh chip on my own stuff here got the dryer rack all sorted out hi so finally got that organized so a lot is being done finishing details they got their office supplies in here as well a little bit more wiring finally got the lights done up right so they can uh I have all the extension cords going all over the place, but a lot of progress. It's almost functional. We got another vent installed here as well. Help pull air through out here. It is so amazing to see how the Lord is working to bring together so much. Let me just show you here real quickly, because obviously people have the question, how much time do we have? Well, when we look on the timeline, and again, you can find a link in the description box. When we compare what the Lord is doing here at the Brook Cherith, it's so much preparing for the day that we see approaching. We are here at the early summer time. The summer solstice is coming up in just a few days. Also, the start of the fourth month, which is considered the start of summer on the Hebrew calendar. But that's just the start, just in a colloquial general sense. Just the three months, fourth, fifth, and sixth are considered the summer. So where we are, we have plenty of time. And we remember back to the springtime, when the trees were putting forth, that reminds us that we know that summer is nine. That parallel, likewise, when you shall see all these things, and particularly talking about the last generation, know that is near even at the doors. And then also the allusions in Song of Solomon about the late spring time, early summer time too as well. But then we also consider June 30th, that was when we saw the Star of Bethlehem reminder signs back in 2015. So there's Incredible reminders, there's biblical commemorative events here. This whole time here, even into the midpoint of July. Midpoint of July, that's about the start of the dog days of summer, when it's really hot. Distinctly, definitely summer, that is then. So we take all this into consideration. We do not know the day or hour. We just look at these pictures and these likewise patterns that he gives us. And we consider the summertime, and then we consider the dog days of summer, the hot, hot time when you definitely know it's summer. And then we also consider the colloquial understanding of summer, the astronomical mark of summer too. But definitely for the average Joe, they would know the hot time of summer is, that's about mid-July. That's going to start then. So we take all this into consideration where we are now. And then we also see how the Lord has sped up things 
where we are now. Then we also see that he has certain things still in play. The generator and trailer is going to be several days before it can be get here. And then obviously we're going to have to work on it a little bit once it does get here. Different preparing things and hooking it up and everything. So we see where we are here. We have this like pattern of seeing it's nigh. But then again we don't know the day or hour. But what do we know more clearly? We don't know the day or hour. But what do we know? We know how the Lord is working right here on the ground level. We know that more than we know the day or hour. So what affects how we go forward in faith? What well, we see the Lord working and doing right now. Also keeping it in context of the celestial time, the celestial pictures, and the celestial time on the heavens, the heavenly clock, and what it declares. And also around this time in late June, early July, it's starting right now, right or in a few days the sun is going to be at Gemini the, the picture of the bride and the bridegroom that picture so there's some incredible pictures that are right there a lot telling us this time is very important so we go forward faithfully step by step asking the Lord for wisdom Lord what do you want me to do today I'll do it and as we go forward the Lord gives us more wisdom of this is how it's all coming together see the Lord already knows our father knows the day and he is the one who's orchestrating all these events in our lives and the work here the preparation work for the rapture rapid response team and so we go forward knowing he is the one who knows the day whenever that is he is the one orchestrating what's going on down here on the ground in response to that and he's also the one who's given us all the understanding about the heavens too so again that don't tell us the day or hour but we can have a pretty good idea that they are probably going to be very closely linked because he is the one orchestrating all these events and these preparations. So as we go forward, faithfully step by step, he gives us more wisdom of how he is most likely going to use it. And it gets incredible as we see the potential for what he has been preparing here at the Brook Chair. So the laundry trailer is almost ready to go. Just need to finish the wiring up to it and finish about two more cabinets just to stow a bunch of stuff. So a lot is coming together really quickly, which means as this project is winding down, I can start working on other projects that are related to the laundry trailer and part of this new operation burning lamp. We want to leave a burning lamp, and so I'm going to show you that in a moment, but a lot is coming together. And this is what excites me, just how the Lord gives strength to work on these projects, and so much happens so quickly. These are already the reading nook tables for the new rapture library all the resources that are going to be in there already got three 10 foot bookshelves where the different resources will lay out on these are practically ready just got two more coats of finish to put on them that trailer is going to come together so quickly and when we consider the laundry trailer how how long have we even had this thing we haven't even had it for four weeks yet and it's almost done and it's one of the most complex parts of the book chair with all the plumbing and parts and mechanical machinery that's operating in there that's one of the most complex things and then to see how the lord gives the green light for the rapture trailer and it's already already so much done the bookshelves this is most of the carpentry work that's going to be done in the rapture library and it's almost done already it will quickly very quickly be functional so much is coming together rapidly the lord is bringing so much together of how he's showing us we are a rapid response team for the rapture and we through this pre-planning and having materials ready we are putting down the nets we are launching the boats in a sense this trailer is a boat the rapture trailer library is another boat that will launch out with so many resources and it's kind of funny i was looking at the laundry trailer the other day considering how the v nose of it reminds me of a boat how it's going to be launched out it's going to be part of taking the brook Cherith mission but also the gospel message to other places the lord is preparing resources right now quickly coming together that are going to be used to quickly spread the information to a lot of people let down some nets to capture a great harvest and we can be a part of it right now today and he wants us to be a part of it and as we see it all quickly come together i am so excited because as i see the lord give strength as he gives wisdom as he leads forward and makes it so much clearer, I get excited because I realize the Lord is 
going to be bringing in a great harvest. He is going to be using this far more than I can imagine. So we're going to go forward faithfully step by step. We're going to prepare it. We're going to get it ready. We're going to launch out. We're going to let down the nets. We're going to try and put as many nets into place as possible so that on that day that we see approaching, they will all be ready to go and we will capture a great draw for our Father's kingdom. And I want you to be a part. Let's go into the library and look at some more. All right, here we are at what is currently called the library and of course it's a cafeteria but it also functions as part of the library because this is where currently we have the main bulk of the resources the print resources and the gospel material and posters and whatnot and the rapture trailer that library is going to be set up the exact same way with a, a book rack just like this have two stacked posters going down the wall that's a simple format. It's, it's not going to be complex at all. And, but that's going to give us 30 feet of rack space for all the resources. And it'll also allow me to finally group together a lot of the resources. Have all the astronomy stuff together. Have some of the prophecy stuff together. Have a lot of the false religion material all together. So be able to group it a little bit better. And hopefully I would like to put in the Heavens Declare poster too as well. Really show them the time where we are at right now and the Lord showed me an incredible verse he brought it to mind of what best pictures what the Lord is doing here with the brook Cherith and that can be found in Luke chapter 5 Luke 5 1 and it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake but the fishermen were gone out of them, and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep, and let down your nets for a draught. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night, and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net brake. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships, so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished, and all that were with him, at the draught of the fishes which they had taken. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. This is the same picture that the Lord used to really convey to me as a way to explain to you what the Lord is doing here with the brook Cherith. See, I, I know it, I can see it from a ground perspective of how the Lord will be using the different resources that are here. And, but sometimes it's hard to convey because I'm on the ground level, you're over there on the other side of the screen. What exactly the Lord is doing? How do all these parts come together? What the Lord is working? Why has He showed us all this information? Then why is He now transitioning to the medical mission again? Which He started before He started this video channel too, by the way. Why is it all coming together now? Why is there a big emphasis? Because we see the day approaching. And the Lord used this picture, this example, this commission that He gave to also illustrate what He's done with the Brook Cherith. The Brook Cherith is a boat. The Brook Cherith is a vessel in a sense. We are on a learning journey. And just like in the passage, Jesus taught the people from the boat. He sat down in the boat and He taught the people. And likewise, we've been on a learning journey where the Lord has been our guide and he's shown us so many things. We've seen so many things about astronomy. And we've seen the celestial clock. We've seen what the heavens declare. We've seen so much that he has shown us. He's told us, look up. Look, lift up your heads and what do you see? You will see and you will know that your redemption draweth nigh. That was taught to us from this boat. He taught from the boat in the story. But then what did he do once he was done teaching? He said, now take this boat. The very same boat that I taught you from, take this boat, 
launch out into the deep and let down your nets. And so this is what we need to picture the book Cherith as. And this is how I've, I've seen it too. The Lord has shown us we're on a journey. We're going somewhere. He's shown us what's up ahead. We've seen the day approaching. We've seen what's on the heavens. We've looked around on our journey. But now he's telling us, I've taught you from this place, but I've taught you for a reason. Because now that I've taught you, I want you to go forward. I want you to launch out. And I want you to let down your nets. Because if you do, you will catch a draught, which is a catch, a harvest of fish. That's what I want you to do with the same boat that I've been teaching you from. Launch it out. You've been sitting down listening this time. You've learned different things, yes. But now I want you to take action. I want you to go forward. It's going to require action on your part to launch the boat, to set the sails, to haul the rigging, to lift the anchor, to move away from the shore. Yes, you're comfortable near the shore, but I want you to launch out into the deep because I've shown you what's up in the heavens, but I've also shown you and told you that there is a draught, a fish right out there that you can catch. You can't catch a draught of fish here in the shallow waters, not sitting down on the shore. No, you need to launch out. This is what I want you to do. Launch out and you will catch a draught of fish. And so this is what the Lord used as an illustration for me to help convey. This is what the Lord is doing right now. He's preparing the trailers. He's preparing the resources. Everything that He has taught us from the same boat of the brook Cherith. He's saying, now take that information. Take it with you. Launch out. And then let down some nets. Because there is a draw to fish out there that you will catch when at that day that you see approaching. You see the day, you know where the fish are? The fish are at that day. Get in the boat and head toward that day and let down your nets because that's where the fish are. And if you get your boat into position with the information that I've shown you and you have it available and you let down the nets, you prepare the nets, at that day, at that spot, you'll catch a draw of fishes. And it's incredible to see the picture and it even uses the very same words that I've used with you. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships, so that they began to sink. And it's incredible when we consider what the Lord is preparing right now. He's preparing as we go forward, the Lord, we find out the Lord is the one who's helping prepare the nets too. He's preparing vessels he's preparing ways to get the net out there to spread the net so that when we do get there we can spread an even larger net than what we imagined when we were closer to the shore when we were more comfortable but the lord is showing us that there is a great harvest right up ahead and we're very close to it because we've seen that, that day he has been the one showing us and just like in the story he told them you launch down to the deep there is a draw of fish out there waiting for you all you have to do is let down the nets I've already told you the fish are there. you got to go out and get them. They're already waiting for you. And this is what we see right now. The Lord is preparing vessels. He's preparing us. Get ready. Get vessels for a rapid response to the rapture, the day you see approaching. Because there's going to be so many tender hearts with so many soul-searching questions. And they are going to be searching for answers. And we have answers about the prophetic time, about what's going on in the world, about the last generation, about what is coming, what is unfolding in the world, and Christ's call demonstrated by, He provides a vessel, He provides a place that demonstrates love, mercy, and compassion. He provides a place that shows He is still offering mercy and grace and His call of salvation to those in the days ahead. He wants to rescue the fish still in the day as ahead. And that's what he calls us to do. And he reminds us, even in this story, that's our job. What is our job? Our job is to be fishers of men. Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. Friend, is this what we're doing? Are we 
always reminding ourselves what our job is. Our job is not to sit on the shore. Our job is to go out and be fishers of men, to catch fish, to go out, launch out, let down the nets. Friends, we're all in the same boat together. You're in this boat. You're sitting right there right now too. You came in that same door, sat down, you've been on this learning journey about the heavens, about this time, about the day we see approaching. You're sitting in the same boat. You heard all the same stuff from the same boat. This is not my ministry. This is all of ours. He's inviting all of us who have been in the boat. Y'all launch out, let down your nets, and you will catch a draw of fishes. It's already there. You can see it up ahead. You can see. We can see it approaching. What are we doing? Are we letting down the nets? Or are we just staying by the shore? Friend, brethren, help us. Help us let down the nets. Help us get the nets into place so that when that day approaches, which we see is very nigh, even at the doors, the nets will be ready. The boats will be ready. Everything will be in place to capture a draw of fishes for our Father's kingdom. He is the one who sent us out on this boat. He's the one who commissioned the boat. He's the one who commissioned and outfitted it with all the resources that it needs. And he's the one who told us, launch out, let down your nets, and get as much help as you can because you're going to need it. Because there's going to be an astonishing draw of fishes for eternity. Friend, be a part. You don't have to hold up the whole net. All you have to do is come alongside, grab part of the net, hold it up, help get in the water, help us get some more nets. That's all you have to do. Lay hold of the net. Help put it in the water. Help get it all in the position. That's our job. We don't have to hold up the whole net by ourselves. We just have to do our part. That's all we're called to do. Brethren, help us with the net. Help us get the net into place. Friend, I want to encourage you, please help us get everything ready. Help us be a part. Be a part of the harvest. I want to be found when our Lord returns. I want to be found with my loins girded about because I'm in the fishing boat trying to put out as much net as I can in the short amount of time that we have left, I'm going to be found drenching wet because I'm trying to get all this net in the water with your help. And I want to be found with my light burning because we're burning the midnight oil. Using every available moment, every available hour, put out nets here at the Brook Cherith with the vessel that he's commissioned, but also at our own local place, in our own boats. Remember, there's two boats in the story. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship. They're partners. They're connected. We're not separate on this journey. You and me, we work together. That they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships. So that they began to sink. Friend, that's the incredible thing here. The Lord has commissioned the main boat of the Brook Cherith. We've all been in that. He's given us all resources. And you know what? You can take your boat in your own area with the resources that he has given us and taught us from this boat and directed us from this boat. The other boat was following this boat that he sent out. And so we can use the resources to hem in on all sides the net for the day we see approaching. And they beckoned unto their partners which were in the other ship that they should come and help them. And friend, that's my plea and my call to you. Brethren, help us. Help us launch out into the deep and let down the nets. There's a great harvest. And this is part of why the Lord organized our new resource, Operation Burning Lamp, the Brook Cherith. And that's the whole message, the mission statement. Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draw. This is why we are here where we are right now, focusing more on the medical mission side of it. The Lord's already shown us all the celestial stuff, we've already seen that. We, we know the day is approaching. We can see it. You just look at the news, you can see it. But we can see more clearly why. We could see it in context of the last generation, the story that's declared on the celestial clock. We have all the resources. He's already shown us the time. Now he's telling us, okay, teaching time's over. Launch out. You see the day approaching, act on it. Take advantage of it. You know what's coming up. Take advantage of it. You see it clearly, go get it. Go take advantage of it. A day that will only come one time. 
in history. Take advantage of it. It's going to be a great draw to fish if you let down the nets. But you're going to have to launch out. You're going to have to get out of your comfort zone. Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draw. And so that's the whole purpose of this resource, to help us better get a sense of what is the Lord doing in this time in history, but also on the learning journey that He's brought us on. He's brought us on a boat. And some people wonder why are we focusing on the medical stuff right now. I don't care about that stuff. I, I only want to care about the astronomy stuff. And tell me a day. Tell me the rapture day. No. The whole reason the Lord showed us all this stuff is so that we will see something. So we will see a day. So we will see an opportunity. And he says, go get it. Go get it. Do you want to be a part of changing the world? Changing somebody's world for eternity? Launch out into the deep. You can. And I'm giving you a special opportunity and commission that he hasn't showed many other people. But he showed it to us. We sat it, with him in the boat and he taught us on this very special learning journey. And he showed us something about what's up ahead. He says, go get it. Go get it. And he's enabling us and strengthening us for that journey. And now he's given us wisdom. This helps encapsulate what is the Lord doing? How is it all coming together? What he's working up in the heavens, what he's showing us about the geopolitical time, and then down here on the ground, in the boat that he has brought us on and taught us from on this whole journey. How's it all coming together? Definitely download the resource. Read it. Ask the Lord for wisdom. Lord, what are you working at this moment? And how can I be found with my loins girded up and my lance burning for you, Lord? I want to be found busy in your kingdom. I want to be found launching out. I want to be found with my hands on the net, getting out as much net as possible for the day that we see approaching, the day that you showed us is coming up. Definitely download it. Check it out. I'm not going to read through the whole book here, but it goes through the verses. This parallel picture helps us understand what has the Lord been doing? There's two boats. Yes, there's the main book boat of the Brook Cherith. You have your own little boat, your own little place. Hopefully, you have resources that the Lord has prepared here. Using them, be ye ready, running for the prize. Write your left behind letter, all the different resources, posters. I mean, we got a whole list of resources that you can leave behind to give those in the days ahead information of where they are. And yes, that was a rapture. And yes, the Lord is still extending His call of love, mercy, and grace to them, calling them to salvation. So definitely download it, check it out, and print it out. Because the neat thing about this resource is that it is for them too. The believers, the lukewarm believers who were left behind, the new believers who maybe had known a lot of churchy stuff, and but now if once they put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ, God can use this resource to show them they have an opportunity. They can be the ones who are helping pull in the nets too. Maybe they didn't do much for Christ before, but now they have a unique, rare opportunity. Grab the nets and start pulling them in. Don't wait to see what's going on. You know where you are. Start pulling in the nets. This resource is not, it's not an infomercial brochure. It is a how-to guide. Take advantage of this prophetic time, the day that we see approaching, when it's approaching, get ready for it. And if you happen to be on the other side of it, you better start pulling in the nets pretty quickly because this opportunity, this draw to fish, is going to be passing by really quickly. Take advantage of it. And so we talk about how the Lord has been preparing the vessels of the trailer and the laundry trailer, particularly preparing these right now. And in miraculous ways, we've seen Him work very divine orchestrations, bringing our path across very unique people and working in ways that only He can. Because He's letting us know He intends to use these boats. He's intending to use these trailers. He's intending when we launch out and we go forward in faith and we let down the nets, get them all in place, He's going to use them. He's going to bring the fish into the nets, what has been prepared, and He is part of preparing the boats. He's part of preparing the nets. That's what's so amazing. As we go forward, we find out He's right in the boat still with us. Helping us get in there already. Ready for the draw that he's pointed out. It's right up ahead. It's right up ahead. Just keep going. Just keep going. It's right up ahead. And brethren, help us. Help us get ready. Because it's so exciting to see our master and our guide, our king, and our beloved is in the boat. Because he wants us to bring in that harvest too. 
He has made us fishers of men. Let's go forward in faith and boldness with our Lord's wisdom as He directs us in the way we should go and where we should let the nets down and getting out as much as possible. And again, that's one of the exciting things about this book, how the Lord suddenly gave wisdom and strength to make this book happen, happen quickly, because He really emphasized to me that this booklet, this resource, is what's going to be left on the table for them when they come in the doors here at the Brook Cherith. They come to the Incident Command Room, which is actually in the next room. When they go in there, this is going to be sitting on the table, and this booklet tells them how they can start pulling in the nets. The nets have already been put into place. The boats are in position. The nets are in position. Tell them, start pulling in the nets. Start pulling in the nets. And so that, that's incredible just to see the timing how the Lord worked it of actually creating a resource that's going to use now that I can more clearly see how He's made it clear how the different trailers, the different boats are going to be used to really launch out even more so, dragging this net, hemming it out to get a large harvest, spreading the net out as far as it can go. That's what these trailers are for. Spread the net even farther. Enlarge the nets for an even larger harvest. That's what he's working right now. That's my perspective. That's how I see it. That's what the Lord is working. And I pray that the Lord makes it real to you that this is what he's doing with these trailers, with these last minute preparations, with this medical clinic, with this place. It's the boat that he is finally getting into position so we can help get all the nets in place so we can drop as many nets as possible. So that's what we're working on. And obviously, there's still a bit more work. And as we see the Lord working, let's outfit the boat as much as possible. As we go forward on these trailers, let's outfit the boat as possible, as much as possible. Get it all ready with the generator, all the supplies it needs, all the drinking water, with the laundry trailer, to make sure it's all outfitted with the supplies that it needs. Anything to help these nets be as strong and as effective as possible when they are let down, on that day when they are engaged. And that also brings us to the project that the Lord's... He's laid it on my heart for a while, but never so clearly, not since we got the laundry trailer, again, just four weeks ago, did He really emphasize we could quickly make a resource, traveling museum, so to speak, to take this information, number one, make it a whole lot more accessible for people, but also be able to take it to churches or schools, wherever they set up the new facility. But this place brings a lot of the resources a whole lot more accessible to the people. Because what we have here with these resources that are here in the cafeteria, mostly the first few people that come in the first few moments after the rapture, they're going to see it and more so the staff. But because this is a staff area, excuse me, the non-patient guests won't see these particular resources. We have some in the library that's in the patient wing, so we have more resources of the same there, but not. We don't have all the posters there. They take up a lot of space and everything. So there's a lot of resources that we have here that they're not readily accessible for the non-patients and family who come. And then, of course, we have a lot of these resources, and there's multiple posters here. And so we need a space where they can be quickly put out place where they can be seen and particularly by the non-patients the family and there's probably 50 percent of the people who come here are not even going to be coming here for medical reasons they're mostly going to be coming looking for me just because i've taught in several churches i know a lot of people have been involved in the community there's several christian leaders here um, who know about the clinic here so there's a lot of people who are going to be coming to me for answers of what just happened but mainly because the Lord has given liberty with a lot of the resources that He has allowed me to preach and teach about in some of the local churches. And there are not a lot of people in this area who have done that. So the list of people that a lot of these Christians are going to be seeking out right after the rapture, it's very short. And praise the Lord, He's worked it out so that I'm closer to the top of the list. So there's a lot of people who are going to meet immediately coming here right away because they're going to be looking for me because they know we already have these resources they might not have paid much attention to it before or just thought it was more of a curiosity but this is the resources are the main reason a lot of people are going to be coming here right away because there's a lot of people who don't know about the clinic side of it 
but they know there's resources here. They know there's someone here who has a much better grasp of it than they do. He's been following it. Let's go see if he's still there. And so that's why I want to make these readily accessible to the non-patient people and really help them be able to see it and view it and read it, especially once a clinic gets started. And when it gets all busy in this area, we really need another area that's a whole lot more conducive to the non-patients because that's going to be the greater volume of people initially. And then, of course, with all the injuries, once word gets out and the clinic gets going, they'll probably balance out. At least initially, one place the Rapture trailer will most likely be parked is right here at these orange cones, right near the entrance of the Brook Cherith. And this is because a lot of people, this is where they'll be coming right away, looking for me, number one. But then also, as things start rolling, this will provide an easy way for them to, as soon as they pull up, wow, there's a Rapture library. This, is this really what the library is for this time? Was that really the rapture? And so they will be able to quickly have the resources right there and a little bit out of the way of the medical area too because a lot of people will be walking more down toward here toward a, a waiting area we have behind us. So the non-patients will be able to access it from that direction, the medical people from that direction too as well. So it's in a great location if we park it here Later on, they can move it a little more closer to the waiting area where the non-patients are. But where these small cones are, that might be where the ramp drops down to. So those who are over here walking up to the Brook Cherith, they'll be able to walk right on into the library trailer. And then right on the side of the trailer, right here in big lettering, wraps your library. You won't be able to miss it. And hopefully that can help answer a lot of questions right away. Then as they keep going forward, realize God has prepared a place for a time that fits exactly with what is expected at this time. That was the rapture. So that is the whole concept behind the rapture trailer project. Just provide a place with a bunch of bookcases along the side where... Tons of resources, all the posters laid out where everybody can read them. I would really like to put out the Heavens Declare resource just to sh show them, the big poster, which shows them, yes, we've looked up, we've lifted up our heads. We've seen the day approaching because the Heavens Declare. And then in context of the last generation, which is another poster right behind us, really be able to show them, yes, this, we're not surprised that all this day was here. And it, they may not read all the information the first few minutes, but they'll be able to quickly get an idea if they had been paying attention to scripture and what was going on in the world and looking up and lifting up their heads, they would not have been caught unawares. And that's one of the big things that we can emphasize with the rapture trailer. Really emphasize to them that yes, this is the prophetic time. God's word is true. There's going to be a lot of chaos and confusion and even deception in the days after the rapture. But within the first few hours after the rapture, we can reinforce in people's hearts. God's word is true. God's word can be trusted. God has been working. He's been preparing a place. You can see the place here physically. It's been prepared for you. Been prepared for this time. A time that the scripture talked about. That scripture told you to look for. You're here. There's advantages for you. There's opportunities. You can still shine bright for the Lord now. If you're caught on the other side. Start pulling in that. You are fishermen, start taking advantage of the opportunity. There's going to be rare opportunities, remedial graces offered to the servants of Christ in the days ahead, those who have the testimony of Christ, where they can shine bright for Christ. They could be part of the harvest. They could win incredible crowns and rewards for our Father's glory. But they're going to have to make a decision real quickly before a lot of chaos distracts them and they get caught up in other things, and we can be a part of those first few valuable hours and days. It really help them purpose in their heart that they will trust in God and that they will decide, they will purpose in their heart to serve Him first and highest above all else, even if that means to the death. What we do in those first few hours is going to change lives for the next seven years. It's a rare opportunity. And this is why we let out the fish nets. This is why we launch out the nets. This is why we get in the boat. This is why we're going forward. This is why we're doing everything. Because we are 
trying to change the world. We're trying to change somebody's world. Capture a fish and bring them into eternity. That's why we are here. That's why the Lord has shown all this stuff to us. It's not for our morbid curiosity. It's to show us a day is approaching, but a great opportunity is approaching. Grab a hold of it. Launch out. Let down the nets. Expend every single hour and so much the more. Lay out the nets. Get ready for our Father's kingdom. Get ready for this draught. And be found doing so. Be found with your loins girded up. Laying out the nets. Be found with your light burning because you're staying up late. Letting down the nets. You're working the midnight hour. We are burning the midnight oil. It's more costly that way, yes. We're going to launch out to the deep. We're going to get out of our comfort zone. We're going to leave certain things behind on the shore because we're going that way. We're going out to catch fish. That's our job, to catch fish, to catch souls, to impact lives. That's our job. We're soldiers. We're stewards. We're sheep. We're also salt. Are we making anybody thirsty for the kingdom? That's our job. Launch out. Let down the nets. Make them thirsty. You're also a light. How are we going to be found? We're going to be found with our lights burning. Burning the midnight oil, shining bright for the kingdom. Or are we going to be found back on the shore, not concerned about what our Father has shown us? Are we even concerned about the nets? Are we concerned about the fish? Or are we only concerned about ourselves and the rapture? What are we doing about the day? that we see approaching. Are we launching out? When we see it, there's great responsibility that we see it. And Lord, give us wisdom. Help us see it more clearly what you are doing, how you have taught us from this boat. Lord, strengthen us, embolden us. Give us wisdom. Give us strength. Show us how to let down the nets. Show us how to enlarge the nets. Lord, show us how to take advantage for your kingdom. Let us seek your kingdom. Let us seek your glory in all that we do and all that we say. And let us rise up, going out to meet the bridegroom, hearing him, heeding him, loving him, and serving him. First, and highest above all else, faithfully till he comes. Maranatha.